Evening guys, how you doing? Just a quick update, I'm going to drive you bananas for this. A uh, quick update on the SparkGab TC wireless um, uh, experiments. Um, okay, uh, I'm sitting up here because I'm absolutely knackered up. I've had a tidy up and uh, I've had this set up for about an hour and I'm just so tired. <laughs> I'm trying to muster the energy. I'm not going to waste the setup, so I'm going to try my best to do this as well as I can. I've got the, um, oh, the wind's hurst, <laughs> one of the rotors come off, but I have spread spread them apart and I, I managed to get them running, uh, but this one, they're hard to spin up, uh, but I, I really want to get back onto that. So I might have a little break from this. Um, you can see I've changed the toroid on the uh, transmitter, if we call it transmitter, and that's the receiver uh, for now, yeah? And um, it's just easier for me to describe these things. Um, okay, thanks to clay, magnets, um, quenching the spark gap. I hope that's what they're doing. I think I've set them up right. I've seen you guys set them up before. I've watched uh, a few videos. Um, uh, not recently, uh, but I'm pretty sure I've got them set up cool. Uh, I've got a fan. I killed a fan the other day. I've killed the CPU fan that was on the, uh, the air cooled gap. I've got the um, the brass gap running. There's an air. Uh, sorry, there's a fan on the flyback. Uh, that's the that's an old flyback out of a 14 inch color TV that was sitting in my loft for about two years, and is now being put to good use. Uh, the fan is off an old um, uh, PS2 that was on the uh, Slayer. So should we get down to it? Uh, let's get things switched on. Really, all it is is a running motor, and you can see the voltage. Uh, and you can see a few other bits going on and I'll probably jump back up here. Okay, so fan on the gap, fan on the flyback. I've had this running for hours and uh, I've had no problems, probably a gap every now and again plays up because it gets uh, a bit of build up between the two electrodes. Okay, and oh, meter. Uh, so I've got the motor here, I just strapped on the side to get some focus. Um, I've got the ground running onto the secondary, so sort of traditional setup now. Um, and apart from this, I don't think this is, I'm not sure. I've got the rectifier running at this coax. I've got the coax joined, these coils are joined. Um, there's my <laughs> really, really amateur homemade rectifier that seems to have lasted, uh, lasted me running slayers and all sorts on it. Okay, um, oh, and yeah, and then the meter, uh, is just joined coming out the back. Uh, 2200 UF cap, 25 volts, uh, bridge rec is iron 4007s. And they're paired up. I don't know why I paired them up. I, I, I do remember Jeremy had trouble where he was blowing them. And I was worried about blowing them. So I paired them up. And that's how far back that goes. Uh, it was <laughs> absolutely ages ago. Um, uh, the little motor is just out of a VHS machine. Um, and I, I couldn't. I looked up trying to find the voltage. What it runs at. But it runs right up to about 12 volts. 12 and a half volts. So I assume that's okay. And, oh, okay, so the spark gap, thanks Clay, about the mags. So you can see, let's hopefully let's bring this down. You can see there's a lot of shadowing because it's dark, I'm sorry. It's nighttime. Um, so yeah, can you see that okay? You can see the mags. So it's just these L-shaped brackets that um, I've seen you guys make spark gaps out of. Um, so I bought a pack, <laughs> I bought a few packs, and uh, they turned out to be pretty useful. So there we go, um, and that's that. Big thyroid, oh, big thyroid on the top um, is now allowing me to have a bit more scope on the uh, size of the spark gap to allow transfer. So before I had to have the really fine gap, and nothing would happen until it was just hits that sweet spot. Now it has like a bit of a range on it, and if I shut up, we can get on with it. <clears throat> oh, there's a one of these um, 
uh, fluorescence out the back of a uh, LCD TV. And there's a stacker up there, thanks to Mr. Woodruff. I uh, was uh, donated a TV and I looked in the back and found exactly what he said. Okay, uh, here we go. Let's turn that lamp off. There's really not a lot, so you can see we're getting a bit of voltage coming up here. And the fans running, uh, sorry, the motors running. Okay, and very little action on here, I would have thought. So all it needs. Okay, gaps running. You can see the gaps playing up now. Okay, and if I get out of the way. We should start picking up. We go, the voltage going up. This light starts flickering and showing us a bit of what's going on. And then this large fluorescent here is pretty cool, so we can get them both in shot. I've actually got the camera up my nose. Sorry. Can you see that? I want the meter focus. Sorry. And the voltage is like 8 volts. So, I think that's a rubbish angle. I'm not sure how much you'll see in there. So, if I make an adjustment to the gap. A long video. There we go. Anyway, they kind of a good indicator, so I can kind of see what's going on with the gap. So if I get the gap, I find a little sweet spot on it. There we go. Uh, there she is. Stop it. You can see the gap starts playing up. And then I'm losing power. Okay. Well, I keep tinkering around with it. It's, it's actually playing up a little bit. I've just sanded, I, I've just used a little bit of sandpaper and cleaned it all up. And I kind of wish I hadn't now, but I think it will settle down. I'm moaning about the build up and then moaning about it. Okay, and then uh, 
Okay. A bit of fun. I'll just turn this up. I get no voltage now. I'm actually asking over to that. Uh... There we go, it settles down. Anyway, right guys, and that is long enough, I think. Um, I know there's, there's a lot to cover and I just want you to be able to see everything. Um, here we go, it's like speeding up again. Uh, take care, thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Cheers guys.